Cancer Vote Pro Podcast, the award-winning cannabis news podcast brought to you by VotePropot.com. Here are your hosts, Phil Adams, Jay Britton, and Andrew McCready's. Farm to Freezer, why fresh frozen is taking over the cannabis harvest. Alabama police respond to a 911 call from a man who reported his weed stolen. Guess what they found? We have these things and other things to talk about. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Vote Pro Podcast. And we're going to start off today. Jay's got some news from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It's an update on a story we did a couple weeks ago about uh, Governor Charlie Baker, who put a ban on all vaping products for four months. We talked about it with Jimmy Young on his show as well. Well, this was just announced, I believe, yesterday. A judge lifted uh, his ban on medical marijuana products. Of course, they have a medical program in Massachusetts. What happened is the Superior Court judge ruled on Tuesday, which is yesterday, our time here, that Governor Charlie Baker and his administration are blocked from enforcing their ban on medical marijuana vaping products leaving it up to the Cannabis Control Commission to decide whether to continue enforcing the prohibition. So essentially, uh, this judge, it's a Superior Court Judge Douglas Wilkins, he determined that they don't have the jurisdiction, I'm sorry, that, that Governor Charlie Baker doesn't have the jurisdiction to, to make a ban on the medical. To issue a statewide ban. Yeah, it's still in place on the on the nicotine products. But okay. he's saying that the Cannabis Control Commission of Massachusetts has to make that determination. The ruling cited the Cannabis Control Commission's, quote, exclusive powers, unquote, over medical marijuana, noting that the state's Department of Public Health, quote, very likely exceeded its authority, unquote, in issuing a September 24th prohibition, which affected the sales of both nicotine and marijuana vape products. So the suit was brought by uh, Vapor Technology Association and a group of medical marijuana patients and advocates. Tuesday's ruling comes after the Massachusetts Supreme Court on Monday announced it will hear arguments in December from the case. It was an overreaction to to ban all the all the vapes. And also, not only that, as we discussed earlier, it just makes this condition worse because everyone's going to the black market. They can't get it legally. Sure. That's right. And that's where the problem is. And I think it's interesting that he didn't say anything about the nicotine cartridges. That's still in place, the prohibition. This is strictly yeah, for well, the- these nicotine. Yeah, they're probably right. big business. Those guys, they sell tons of them, and they're out there trying to buy cheap cartridges. Right. Well, right. You know, but I they, think they, they, nicotine falls under the, um, the 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 state health board or whatever they're that's, calling that's that. That's exactly right. That's uh, right. Whereas um, anything involving cannabis, and it goes to a right. different governing body that, that has jurisdiction, and that's what the suit is, is that claiming. Was, that, was, that was his ruling, Phil, exactly. The Department of Public Health is responsible for the nicotine, and the Cannabis Control Commission is responsible for the medical marijuana. Right. So yeah. had, he had no— The fact no, that they're, the common denominator here is vape cartridges has nothing seems to, to be irrelevant of the law. In, right. uh, of the ruling. Well, we've got some news on the business front involving some um, pretty big players in, in the industry. Um, what do you have on uh, winners and losers there, Andrew? It was a tough week for cannabis, but a very good week for psychedelics and hemp. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Four major cities took a significant steps forward to decriminalize psilocybin mushrooms and psychedelic plants. Uh, Meanwhile, the United States Department of Agriculture released uh, regulations for the production of hemp and opening channels for the public to weigh in on it. Hmm. So in the meantime, MedMen tumbled on substantial growth in the in its net losses, which came in at around eighty two million dollars for the fourth quarter. More than double the losses reported the same time period last year. Wow. Full revenues of $130 million are up 227% hmm. over last year. Hexa Group also posted fourth quarter, poor fourth quarter results with a adjustment loss of, uh, well, Canadian be $47 million, American would be $33 million. Man, they're, they're just hemorrhaging the, money. Jeez. Right. Yeah. Which the company. Not just them either. Was, no. Well, that was driven by the significant scale of the operation and increased stock based compensation expenses. Due to the high, higher cannabis market value, increased uh, research and development expenditures and, have impa- and an impairment loss on inventory 
Mm. Yeah, it, the, the operating costs. People get into the business. Oh, look, we're going to grow some weed. It's like growing yeah. money on, yeah. you know, it's like having a right. money grows on trees. And they don't understand the competition and the regulations and the hardships and challenges that you're going to endure. Right. Uh, yeah. Now, um, well, farming ain't easy anyway. I mean, growing right. is not easy. I don't care if you're growing corn, tomatoes, right. and the profit margins are right. nothing. Or weed. Diani Med Brands Incorporated failed to restructure its debt or find a strategic buyer to acquire its assets going into a receivership. Mm. The company's in default for $24.8 million, yeah. plus any additional interest or fees and expenses. So it's been a rough week for companies okay. like MedMen, Diane, Hexo. MedMen lost control of its board. Diane, Diane Men is going bankrupt, and Hexo stumbled badly on projected revenue. You're saying I should sell my stock. Well, I wouldn't sell yet. Probably at this point, just to hold on to it, you know? Yeah. So a company is being forced to reckon with the unrealistic expenses that are being incurred by this industry. It's just crazy. And and I imagine for those companies that survive whatever this great shakeout is financially, investors in those companies over the next year or so, at some point, they'll bottom out and people are going to get some real bargains. On right. those stocks, possibly, yeah. you know, they're going for a dollar and change, and uh, a lot of them. And and I, I the upside is still got to be there somewhere somehow. <laughs> so, you know, I I bought some stock yeah. today. I bought some cannabis stock today on True Leaf on some positive reports and future forecasts. So cross your fingers on that one. Well, it, you got to be in for the long haul. Yeah, I think so. Well, some positive news, 1906 closed at $18 million, a funding round that led by Navy Capital. Michigan Marijuana Regulatory Agency started accepting applications for uh, marijuana businesses in the state. Liberty Health Sciences Incorporated uh, rallied after a uh, second quarter loss, and uh, so hmm. that, that's looking good. good. That's good. So there's some positive news in there. Data out of... Uh, Cannabis MD shows CBD is currently more popular, as measured by volume, more popular than Jesus, Kanye, the NBA, Taylor Swift, the Beatles, <laughs> Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, and several other hot topics. <laughs> Only Pornhub and Halloween beat CBD's popularity this week. Wow. wow. <laughs> I like John Lennon there. <laughs> interesting. Well, yeah, you know. that's an interesting thing, but because because actually the CBD and the and the psychedelic markets are kind of new. They're whereas yeah, marijuana. Yeah. The market has is has been established for years, right? But this new CBD thing that's kind of a new thing. Right. Yeah, it is. So they're having less problems, and also it's not psychoactive. And the Farm Act helped them out a lot. Yeah. And now apparently this the psilocybin mushrooms and all that. I mean, all these cities are going. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, right. everyone who would have seen that, that is like really. I, mean, I never I, that came out of left field. That came out of nowhere. Never. It really did. Really. But yeah. But apparently, I, I read an article that said actually psilocybin mushrooms is is safer than marijuana. Is that right? Well, down. how can it be safer than marijuana when marijuana is as safe as... Well, as far as... Well, you know, there's some oh. physical effect. I guess the smoking of it's not, you know... I guess, yeah. Less, but, uh, less concentrates and less people going to the emergency room is what maybe they're saying. Right. And people are microdosing the, the, the psychedelic yeah. uh, mushrooms. And apparently it helps great for uh, anxiety and depression. Hmm. And apparently some people are actually using it for alcoholism. No you know, kidding. trying to dry out. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So anyway, yeah, so the uh, cannabis industry is experiencing, I mean, it has oh, its, its hurdles. Yeah. And if you think you could just get into this and make money and not re- <laughs> and shoot shoot from the hip, you're you're going to be you're out gonna of luck. Get screwed. You, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for Vote Pro Podcast. If you enjoy the show, we'd love to hear from you. Send us your thoughts at votepropot.com slash contact or send us an email at podcast at votepropot.com and please give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. If you'd like to be part of the show, call our message line at 240-257-2441. Tell your friends about us and be sure to like, follow and share us on social media. Just go to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter and do a search for Vote Pro Pot. Now, back to the boys. We talk about some of the benefits of cannabis, THC and CBD and all that. What happens when you just eat raw marijuana and uh, this is something that i've heard people talk about you know with edibles and 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 we're not talking about that we're talking about raw fresh 
plants? What happens if you just ate a fresh bud of cannabis? Well, you don't um, get high. Is it going to get you high? No. No, no, it's not. Because what happens is the raw plant has THCA, which is not psychoactive. You have to decarboxylate it and drop the acid molecule so it's just THC. Right. Now, that happens when you cure it and dry it and when you smoke it. It decarboxylated so you get a psychotropic effect. So if you eat it and it's not and it's fresh and, and hasn't been decarboxylated, you're not going to get any psychotropic effect, especially if you eat it without eating it with some with a fat molecule or an alcohol that the THC molecule can piggyback it. on so your body can absorb it. So if it's not a piggyback, you, you're you're not going to your body's not even going to absorb it. You right. go right through your system. Now the same is true for CBD as well. It's it's not psychoactive in any case, but um, before it's dried or heated, that has an acid molecule as well, CBDA. Um, and uh, uh, do you get the same benefits from CBDA? Um, well, you get some benefits, different benefits. Um, nausea reduction is, uh, uh, it's very good for that. Reduces inflame, uh, inflammation. It's got anti-inflammatory effects, though it doesn't get you high. It, it does have, you know, certain effects and certain benefits. Now, there are, there are some folks talking about cannabis, raw weed, as the next superfood. You've heard about things like, you know, blueberries and acai right. berries and, and mm -hmm. uh, salmon and broccoli and things like that. Right. that shit, yeah. is, is that true of uh, weed, of marijuana? Well, according to this article from WikiLeaf, um, <laughs> Wikileaf. and that's at wikileaf.com. Yep. Um, and this is, and I'm brand new to that website, but I, I, I like what I see so far. Yeah, it's a good site. I it's uh, the there's no medical definition for superfood, so it's hard to really classify. Yes, it is. No, it's not. But it is considered very, uh, you know, rich in certain compounds. Um, of course, uh, you know, it's an excellent source of uh, a lot of the same things that other leafy vegetables are. Calcium, iron, uh, potassium, zinc, and a lot of fiber. And of course, like any other green plant, it contains chlorophyll, which researchers have uh, concluded that has anti-aging, anti-acne, uh, and wound healing properties. Some suggest even that it may slow cancer growth. So there's that. Um, raw weed is also high in polyphenols, which is a powerful antioxidant, which has lots of health benefits. And of course, there are all of the different terpenes and, you know, each strain of, of marijuana has got its own set of terpenes and each one has its own uh, purported health benefits. So, um, and, and not only that, but hemp seeds, you can buy them in the grocery store. Yeah. Um, they have, they're full of protein and vitamins and, and uh, you know, minerals and other things. So um, it's, uh, you know, whether there's never, while there's not really any true definition of what a superfood is um there are a lot of a lot of benefits to eating raw cannabis and and again we're not talking about eating a bud from the from the uh dispensary we're talking about fresh right right you know plants. whole plant yeah and, and andrew's certainly done articles and talked about it and he's a big promoter of as a medical in the in terms of medical advantages of the whole plant right andrew i mean Right. There's been a lot, a lot of people reported really great results by juicing raw cannabis. Right. Uh, okay. And also, I read an article that said like the hemp seeds uh, are so nutritional. You Not only could you survive off them, you could thrive. Yeah. And now for years, uh, hemp grew wild across the United States. Right. And on, on and every farm had hemp growing on it. And for uh, the longest time, all livestock animals, part of their diet was raw, raw cannabis. Hmm. Huh. No yeah. kidding. And which meant uh, if you're eating the livestock, then you were you were yeah. getting the cannabis. Sure. Well, you weren't getting high off it, but you're getting the benefits from the all ben the, the medical benefits. That's right. Sure. Have you ever tried juicing? Have you ever tried uh, uh, to to juice it, Andrew? What it taste? Say, yes, it I had. Like? I, I had, uh, but uh, it's expensive. It was. It was yeah, it was uh, mostly you know, a lot of fan leaves and you know, oh, some small popcorn buds. Yeah. You know, mix into a smoothie. 
Yeah, I tried it one time. I mean, it tastes like shit. Yeah, no, well, it tastes really. You Ugh. taste the chlorophyll. Yeah. Uh, that's probably because I used leaves. You know, too. Oh, true. Yeah, but right. But you know, I, I didn't feel bad. Right. So <laughs> okay, I only did it once, okay. so I can't come to any conclusion. Well, it's 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 extremely bitter. I mean, all of that grassy flavor is bitter. They. This article suggests a 10 to 1 ratio with fruits and vegetables, you know, carrot juice, apple juice, pineapples, mm-hmm. pears. You, you know, you can juice them all together. Um, that makes sense. And Some you can cream. get a, just like a, a raw cannabis <laughs> smoothie, so to right. speak. You know, you can uh, you can mitigate the bad taste. What about just eating, chomping on some raw marijuana? Can you do that? Well, there's a, there's in, in uh, when it comes to cannabis edibles, you have your like your medical uh edibles then you have like your snack edibles cookies and brownies but then you have like a, a sort of like a, a third category of of cooking with cannabis on more of a gourmet level where you're not really cooking for the high as much as infusing it with a you use sometimes you use a cbd cbd strong sometimes you use leaves sometimes you use flour sometimes you use the pollen or as an hmm. It's more of the gourmet end of it, okay. and it's not really about getting high as much as it is using. I mean, it is about getting high, but you know, right? But it's 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 a how how. Uh, but again, refined. that's 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 cooking and and carboxylating the cannabis. We're talking about just eating raw leaves raw. or or buds. No, they do that too. Yeah, yeah, no, they do that. They'll, they'll put in, you know leaves in salads and things like that. So, so, so it's a cannabis cuisine, you know, more of a than. Yeah. Uh, then I'd so throw. so um bottom line don't worry about getting high off it you will not if you are looking for some pretty uh strong you know nutritional benefits of it you will find them that's why it's important when they write up leg- uh, regulations for legalizations in every state that they include and they allow for home grow because you cannot eat fresh cannabis Good unless point. you're growing it it's yourself so important you, can't- you couldn't afford it now this brings us to another to my next story, okay. and that's called and that's what's happening is a lot of these farmers are harvesting their plants and freezing the fresh plant instead of drying and curing it. A couple of years ago, if you would have said I'm going to freeze my plant, people would have looked at you like <laughs> you're crazy. You know, I've never heard but, of it until recently. Yeah, I never heard. Well, until what just happens now. now, especially with all, with the legalization, there's been this huge market for extracts. Extracts. I mean, the, the consumption of extracts in the last twenty years oh has just God. skyrocketed. The last few. You know, so with vape pens alone, let alone shatters and right. butters and, and dabs. Because of that, there's a big increase for oil. And they're finding instead of taking the – it's cheaper for the grower to take it, freeze it fresh, and then to take send it to the processor and, and they process that, then to dry it and cure it. Hmm. It's quicker and it's cheaper. And and a lot of people are saying it's better. No kidding. Well, that's, that's interesting. So the demand for extracts, the savings on harvests – you know, so this whole farm to, you know, from farm to freezer yeah. is uh, is something I think you're going to be seeing a lot more of in the future. But but anyway, the, but what they're calling it is this new thing called live resin. And uh, I talked to one guy and he said, when you look at it in a microscope, it moves, which I don't think is true. But uh, <laughs> but but this seems to be and it's had how much did he had? <laughs> wow. No man. attitudes. It's really fresh. It <laughs> maintains a lot of the a lot of the um, terpenes. Gotcha. The, the jury's still out on it, whether it's better. I, we know it's different, and it works, and people are really liking it. We got another story, this one out of Alabama. I, I think this guy is a, a candidate for a Darwin Award. What do you think? Oh, this a yeah, big-time Darwin Award. This is like – it's like this guy give stoners like us a bad name. So this guy, his name is Dante Michael Bellamoli, 21 years old. So what happens is he's in a store – any little shop, like a Seven Eleven kind of shop, he walks out, and his somebody stole the weed out of his car. So what does he do? Now keep in mind, this is in Alabama. He calls right. the cops. So right. he calls. Well, or did or did was it medical legally bought, and he had a card? No. So oh, it's black market weed. Yeah, what an idiot. Oh, this guy. Yeah, this is so, Alabama. They don't have anything. It yeah, it's Alabama. So this guy calls the cops. He calls nine one one. And he says, I need some help. I've been robbed. And the cops send the car out. And he says, yeah, somebody, you know, stole some, stole my uh, cannabis, stole my marijuana. And so the cops search his car and they find cocaine in his car. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy's a true genius. What a maroon. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. When the Menton Police Department and agents from the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office 
narcotics and interdiction team responded to assist the Bellamani, the incident got more serious. Bellamani, who was from Georgia, was found to be in possession of cocaine and drug paraphernalia at the store on Highway 117 in Mentone. Belmonte was arrested and charged with possession of a controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia. And uh, the sheriff said it wasn't the first time they'd received this particular call from this guy. So uh, this guy's a real genius, and now he's looking at like 10 years. <laughs> I mean, he, did he want to go to jail? I don't I mean, know. They have a all picture you of have him. to do is, you know, <laughs> STFU. They have a mug shot of this guy. and Yeah, he looks kind of inbred. Well. <laughs> My my question is, did they ever find the guy that stole the weed? <laughs> I don't think they cared, you know. The real criminal. Jeez. Oh, the real I mean, criminal? Really, there he really is a real criminal. I don't know if this is really a – I'm making finger quotes here, a cannabis story for the show, but I just – when I read it, I said, oh, my God. Wow. Well, it is, well, you're like right, you said, Phil. That, it's a definitely up for a Darwin Award. <laughs> this, this is a reason cannabis users have a bad name. That's it. That's the point. Of, that's the whole point, yeah. this is right, the, And, and ju- just think of all the st- – Stupid stories you've heard of people under the influence of alcohol. Oh, God, yeah. That's yeah. true. I mean, I was in the bar business for 25 years. I could tell you stories. <laughs> it'd take a week for me to tell you all the stories of the, of yeah. the, God, the God, crazy. <laughs> oh, it's, it's insane. Yeah. And then you combine that with a, with a, with a, with a uh, crowd mentality. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. good. Yeah. Not good. Wow. Well, folks, we sure are glad you joined us today for another episode of Vote Pro Podcast. And we hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. If you did, do us a favor, go online to Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast platform you're on. Give us a five-star rating. It really will help us out, and we sure would appreciate it. And send us an email at podcast at votepropot.com. Let us know what you think of the show. Give us ideas for stories. Call our message line at 240-257-2441. Leave a message and we'll play it on the show. So much is going on in the world of cannabis every week that it's impossible for us to to even scratch the surface on our podcast. So we try to share a lot of information on social media. So please go to Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter and do a search for Vote Pro Pod. Lock me up. Find me good. Label me a menace to your quiet neighborhood. I don't grow no plants. The state says I can't. That's not freedom. 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 That's the point. Smoke a bowl. I roll a joint.
that's the point.